Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin. Dubious speculation. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. This is going to be one of the longer videos. I'd like to attack this uh, at as, you know, from as many angles as, as possible. And I really want to tie in various aspects of the cryptoverse to try to develop a, a comprehensive view of, of what is happening, what is likely to happen, and really looking at you know a couple of different potential outcomes as Bitcoin goes into the halving, okay? So right now, Bitcoin is still coming in at $64,000. Price hasn't really changed a whole lot. What we're going to first do is, is we'll look at we'll look at it on some various time frames, but essentially what a lot of this is going to boil down to is a shift in liquidity within the cryptoverse. And we have talked about this through the lens of the dominance of Bitcoin, which at this point has become sort of a meme just because of how long the whole process is taking to play out. Be that as it may, to me, it still looks like it is playing out. In order for me to have any luck of, of providing any insight that anyone might be willing to listen to, I, I think I first should at least, you know, communicate what my bias is. Because if I don't do that, then, you know, I, I, I might not, I might, it, it might be that I'm missing something, right? And, and if that's the case, then I, I think it is fair for the audience to know what my bias is. Um, so sort of to recap, I don't really make many different moves in my portfolio as the years go on. I, I think that it's best oftentimes to do as little as possible and to just make a few key moves when it makes sense to do so, okay? So for me, what I did back in 2021 was I essentially sold a lot of Bitcoin here. That was when the risk metric went all the way up to the highest risk levels, right? I sold about 87% of my Bitcoin. Then I bought some of it back, not all of it, down here. In late 2021, I thought that Bitcoin was going to go higher than this, but it didn't. And so I didn't really get the chance uh, to, to sort of sell it again, just because I was, in my own mind, I was convinced that it was ultimately going to go higher. So I was able to sell a lot of it here, bought some of it back here. And then once it was very clear that we were, you know, really entering into a bear market in early 2022, I converted my altcoins to Bitcoin to preserve the Satoshi valuation of my portfolio. So if you were to look at all Bitcoin pairs, total three minus USCT divided by Bitcoin, I essentially converted a lot of my altcoins to Bitcoin right here. Okay. And the reason was because I, I said that altcoins were likely going to bleed in their Bitcoin valuations for a number of years. And the best way to preserve the Satoshi valuation of your portfolio is to essentially convert your altcoins to Bitcoin in preparation for a Bitcoin dominance rally. I also said that Bitcoin would likely hit new all-time highs before most of the other cryptocurrencies, right? And again, here we are, March 23rd, Ethereum has still not hit new highs. Uh, and a lot of the altcoins that you were, you know, that many people were following back then have not hit new, have not hit new highs, right? Solana, Cardano, Polkadot, Avalanche, right? none of those have actually hit new highs. There are some newer altcoins that have hit new highs, but the ones that tend to do that are the ones that don't have all the baggage from the prior cycle, right? Now, there are a few, I think, that have hit new all-time highs that were from the prior cycle, but I'm not trying to to pick the one or few, you know, the few altcoins that that go against the trend. I'm trying to capture the general market trend, right? So my bias was to convert altcoins to Bitcoin in this area in Q1 of 2022. From there, what I did was I converted my ETH to Bitcoin 
in May of 2022 at 0.0749. So I converted my ETH to Bitcoin right here. I honestly felt like an absolute genius when a few weeks later, ETH Bitcoin collapsed all the way down to this level. However, I was very quickly humbled when the market basically just ripped back up to the upside, essentially sweeping sort of the highs from where I had sold from. Although I did not actually convert any of my, you know, I, I did not buy back in to, to ETH from my Bitcoin position. I just sat with Bitcoin and, and basically assumed that ETH Bitcoin would top out at the merge because it was, it, it was essentially mimicking a secondary distribution phase, just like Bitcoin had in 2021. So I converted my alts to Bitcoin. I converted my ETH to Bitcoin here, a little bit more over here, and then more over here going into the merge. And now I, I feel fairly confident because, well, ETH Bitcoin is all the way back down here. So all of those trades have, have essentially done pretty well, right? Those trades have done pretty well. The one that didn't do really well was buying back some of the Bitcoin in the summer of 2021 and then not selling it in the secondary top. And the reason for that is because I, I sold in the first top when we went into the higher risk bands. And my mistake was assuming that we would go into the higher risk bands again, like we did in 2013. So some of the trades worked out, right? Some of them didn't. I mean, certainly buying Bitcoin all the way back over here and, and selling this high was, <laughs> was, was great. Um, but then there have been some, some hiccups along the way. So that essentially is what my bias is, right? You know, it was basically to stick with Bitcoin and, you know, convert the alts to Bitcoin to ride it out and, and to just be patient. And, you know, I, I do, according to the, um, to the risk levels, when we went over here, I did get some limit orders filled on Bitcoin USD back in this area. Not as much, honestly, as I would have liked, um, but some of them were filled, uh, which is a good thing. You know, there's, there's two different ways you can fill in the crypto versus basically, you know, you can feel sad because you bought too much and you regret it, or you can feel sad because you bought too little, right? A lot of people never really feel content with where they are because if prices go up, you always wish you bought more. If prices go down, you wish you hadn't bought as much. Um, so I think the better, the better feeling is to wish you had bought more than to wish you hadn't bought so much. Um, but essentially, those, that's where my bias is, right? And, you know, throughout, throughout 2023, I was under the impression that dominance was going to go up a lot, right? And I, I was right about that. I mean, I, I think it is one of the, um, you know, one of the things about 2023 that I got the most correct. There were some, there were some things I definitely did not get correct. That was probably one of the things I got the most correct in 2023 was the Bitcoin dominance essentially going up for the better part of the entire year. And that effectively played out as well. And in fact, if you were to look at monthly Heiken Ashi candles, I mean, you can see that Bitcoin dominance has been green since December of 2022. So my bias has been for the last, let's call it, you know, a little over two years has been to assume that Bitcoin dominance is going up and that altcoins are bleeding back to Bitcoin and that ETH is bleeding back to Bitcoin. So that is my bias. So when we, when, when I make, as I make this video, you're probably going to wonder like, why is he only talking about it from this point of view? And I honestly think it's just because that's what my bias is. And I will try to provide some counterpoints, but I do feel fairly strong conviction in Bitcoin dominance going higher. And I, I feel fairly strong conviction in altcoins still bleeding against Bitcoin. I know that's not a popular theory. Um, and I, I understand, you know, why people don't like that view, but it is my view and I will continue to, to support that view until I see evidence not to. So from here, the question is, is where is Bitcoin USD going to go as we go into the halving? We've talked a lot about how, you know, this has been a very sort of narrative driven thing, right? I mean, we had the spot ETF, Bitcoin rallied into the spot ETF. We had the merge for ETH. ETH Bitcoin topped out the week of the merge. The next order of business is the Bitcoin halving, right? I mean, I know there's speculation about the spot ETF 
for Ethereum in May. And, and while I do think that does have some merit, um, even though I don't think the, the odds right now, according to what I've read, are not that high, I honestly have no idea if it's going to be approved. But whether it's approved or not, to me, right now is irrelevant because the Bitcoin having comes first. And I think that Bitcoin dominance is due for a breakout and a very strong breakout at that. Now, I know right now it's been trending down this month, but if you look at Bitcoin dominance, it has been doing this thing where, you know, it takes a couple steps, you know, goes two steps forward and then like one step back, right? It does that a lot or some, you know, permutation of it. Whereas effectively, though, it just keeps on putting in higher lows, right? And during the consolidation periods, it has a lot of people worrying that it's not actually going up. And then what happens is you, you know, you wake up one morning and, and, it, and it, or you wake up, there's like a, a week or two goes by, Bitcoin dominance goes up a lot very, very quickly. And then it doesn't do anything for like the next two or three months. Like, look at this, right? I mean, you know, we, we effectively spent three months wondering if we were actually going to break out above the range highs. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people really thought we were not going to. And they, they said that we would likely see it come back down here and go into an alt season. But my definition of alt season is where the Bitcoin dominance is collapsing. So I know while a lot of altcoins have gone up on their USD pairs, Bitcoin dominance is going up. So what to me that means is that Bitcoin is going up. And the only reason the altcoin market is going up is because Bitcoin. The altcoin market's not going up because they're fundamentally doing better than Bitcoin right now. They're going up because Bitcoin's going up. The reason is because, well, we are nearing, we're in a high interest rate and uh, quantitative tightening environment. And that's exactly what happened during the last high interest rate and quantitative tightening environment was that Bitcoin dominance went up as Bitcoin rallied. And also it went up as Bitcoin went down, right? It went up no matter what. And so what I'd like to do is talk about Bitcoin USD first without the lens of everything else, but then I want to talk about it through the lens of everything else. Okay. The first thing to note here is that, you know, Bitcoin has had a couple of really strong moves pretty recently, right? The first of which was a 96% rally that started in September. The second of which was a 90% rally that started in January and topped out, you know, a couple of weeks ago, if you want to call that a, a local top. And then the question is, is, well, is there going to be a third move, right? I know a lot of people, I don't really talk about Elliott wave theory, but I was talking about sort of these three waves, uh, the sort of the three wave structure and a lot of what we've seen with Bitcoin and then I saw a lot of comments where people were saying like, oh, no, he's talking about Elliott waves. But the, the, the general idea, right, is that a lot of times, I don't really care what you call them, right? A lot of times you'll see sort of three moves, you know, sort of three waves, right? Wave one, wave two, wave three, right? Wave one, wave two, wave three. And then in 2019, same thing, right? You got your first wave, second wave third wave. What do you notice about all three of these situations, right? In two of them, the third wave was a very similar move as the two that came before it, right? So here you had a move that was essentially a 60% move, another 70, 80% move, and then the third the third wave was also about an 80% move, right? So you, you essentially had three moves that were on par with one another in terms of how explosive they were in 2021 right you had a very similar type of thing right you had like an like an 80 percent rally or a 90 percent rally and then you had like a hundred and something percent rally and then you had one final hundred percent rally or so right so in those two cases you had three waves and the third wave was about as explosive as the, the two waves that came before it over here, we had three waves, but the third wave was not as explosive, right? So you had your first wave, which was about a 60% rally, a second wave, about a 60% rally, but then the third wave was only about a 30% rally, right? So it, it essentially, it was unable to make it to that full, say, 60% rally again to get Bitcoin all the way up to, you know, to what would have been 40K or so had it accomplished it 
during those three waves, right? So it was sort of a failed final fifth wave or a final, sorry, I mean, whatever you want to call it. I'm kind of going back to the LA wave stuff, but whatever you want to call it, right? It was final, it was a failed third wave where it didn't really experience the same type of move to the upside as the other two waves did, right? And, and again, you can see 2019, this, this rally over here and then this one over here, right? It had three waves that were all about the same. And so then it, it sort of raises the question, well, if there is a third wave, right? If there is a third wave, will it be like this? Or will it be like these, right? And I mean, obviously there's a lot of people that feel very strongly about what way they think it's going to go. The reality is, in my opinion, is that there's no way for anyone to fully know. But what I can say is that I think there is a way to know in real time, or at least to get some type of predictive capability, I think there is a metric that can tell us which way it will ultimately play out. And I've talked about it forever. And I, I believe we are about to enter the final crescendo of the Bitcoin dominance rally. And I, I, I think that altcoins are very close to breaking down against Bitcoin. Although I know right now it does not appear that way. But I feel like I can make a very compelling case that they are. Remember, go back to what I said at the beginning of the video. What is my bias? My bias was that I converted my alts to Bitcoin two years ago. My bias was that I converted my ETH to Bitcoin over here. Those are, that's my bias. So perhaps the reason I view the altcoin market in this way is because it would benefit me if this is the way that it plays out, right? But for every, you know, there, there's there's a thousand other people out there that are going to look at the market, but they're going to see something completely different. And, and I, I think that those people have valid points as well. I just, I don't really see many people pointing these things out, right? It's just alt season and, and, and you know, a lot of people assuming that altcoins will will sort of just gain market share. So I feel like it is my responsibility because I have been sort of the uh, sort of the main um, sort of the main narrative that I've been focused on for a long time is that Bitcoin will reclaim a lot of this market share. So I, I sort of feel like a responsibility to continue to point this out because I've fallen into the trap of assuming that like altcoins are, are gaining on Bitcoin and when in reality, most of them are not. Right, there are some that are right. Again, you can leave the you can leave the names of the ones that are in the in the comments if it'll if it makes you feel better. But that is my view, that is my bias, and I want to talk a little bit about this metric that I think can give us insight into whether if we do get a third wave, whether it would lead to a failed one like over here, or if it would lead to something like this or like this like we saw in 2019 and 2021. That metric, as you should already well know, is the valuation of altcoins on their Bitcoin pairs. And again, I think I can make a very compelling case why they are relevant. Now, if you have been following alt Bitcoin pairs over the last few weeks, you're probably wondering, what has been smoking and can I have too? Because the altcoin market has actually been gaining on Bitcoin basically since the beginning of March, right? So I don't really blame you for not really buying what I'm selling here because the altcoin market, you know, since the beginning of March has gone from 0.4 to 0.48, meaning, you know, alt Bitcoin valuations, the altcoin market cap is essentially 48% of Bitcoin's market cap, whereas a few weeks ago, it was 40% of Bitcoin's market cap. So you might not really get why I think that alt Bitcoin pairs are about to break down when it certainly seems like they are in the process of breaking up. It all goes back to sort of the, the, the sloshing around of liquidity as, you know, as we go from one extreme to the other, as people sort of bet on whether alt season is going to happen or not. And 
I think that the most likely outcome as we get into the next few weeks, it could be going into the halving. It's, it's possible that it bleeds into May as well. But I think that this liquidity in the altcoin market, what it means is that it's just liquidity that's going to go back to Bitcoin, right? Now, beyond my bias, why would that be my assumption, right? Beyond my bias, because me, my bias is that I converted my altcoins to Bitcoin and I converted my ETH to Bitcoin, so that's my bias. But beyond that, why would I assume that that is the most likely outcome? The reason is because of my understanding, which again, could be naive, admittedly, is that when you are in an environment, right, as when, when interest rates are high and when the Fed is reducing the size of their balance sheet, when you have essentially this setup, quantitative tightening and high rates, you know, during a pause up here or late business cycle, my assumption is that altcoins break down right? That's my assumption, is that altcoins will break down when you get into sort of the tail end of a rate hiking cycle, and the Fed is reducing the size of their balance sheet, right? In fact, you can see that it was precisely last cycle when, or precisely when the Fed pivoted from quantitative tightening to quantitative easing last cycle, that the altcoin market actually bottomed out. You see that? QT to QE, altcoins bottomed against Bitcoin. Right now, we are still in quantitative tightening. So my bias is to assume that altcoins will break down against Bitcoin because we have not seen a shift in monetary policy by the Federal Reserve. Because of that, as the Fed goes further and further and further, my assumption is that people will go to higher quality assets that they think will ultimately survive higher interest rates and, and, and tighter and tighter monetary policy. That is my assumption, right? It's the same reason why NVIDIA and Microsoft and, and, and Google and, and Meta, it's the same reason why all of those have been out, like sort of been leading the S&P 500. It's because people know, or at least they think they know that those will survive because they have a really strong balance sheet, right? They can survive high rates, right? It's not like NVIDIA is, is, you know, can't survive high rates. I mean, they might take a hit at some point whenever we go back to looser monetary policy and there's sort of a redistribution of capital from those sort of those blue chips that can survive into some, some lower market cap stuff. But that is my bias, is that altcoins will break down against Bitcoin. That is my bias. And I've explained why. Not only because quantitative tightening you can see that all Bitcoin pairs bottomed out. They also bottomed out after the Fed started to cut last cycle. The Fed hasn't started to cut yet. And there's a good chance they're, they're not going to cut in May. I, I mean, I think there's a chance, like I, I would argue there's actually a greater than 12% chance they cut in May, maybe like 25% chance, still more than likely they cut in June. But I think it's probably a little bit greater than 12% because I think there is a risk that the unemployment rate could come in at 4% next month. And if that happens, then I, I think you might even get to 50-50. But for now, I think, you know, somewhere around 20% is, is probably like sort of the right, the right area. But thinking about <clears throat> all Bitcoin pairs and thinking about, well, Ben, they've been going up for the last few weeks. So why do we assume they have to turn around? Well, if you look at this very closely, what do you notice about all Bitcoin pairs over here when they also formed sort of a, a, a low and they bounced along that low for a while. How long did they bounce off of that low before the low, before sort of the highs were in, before this, this bounce right here was over? You see that little bounce right here off the final low? Look at this. From this low here to this wick was 39 weeks, right? It was 39 weeks. Altcoins rallied, alt Bitcoin pairs rallied from 42% to 53%, right? But they topped out after 39 weeks from first forming the range low, after 39 weeks. Now go to this cycle and look at the same thing. 
we formed this low right here the week of June 26. We are currently on week 38. So next week is week 39. Next week is also the last week of March that sort of goes into, um, that'll sort of take us to the beginning of April uh, the following week. So it seems to me like there is a very strong case to be made that there will be a flow of altcoin liquidity back to Bitcoin as we go into the halving, which is only a, a few weeks away, right? If you look at uh, sort of some of the estimations, right, it's, you know, about a little less than a month, right? A little less than a month. So when I think about this, I, I, I do wonder, first of all, if will that flow actually occur in April or will it take longer? I don't know the answer to that question. I, I, I wish I did. I, I don't actually know. I think there is a case we made that it'll happen in April because if you think about what happened into the merge, ETH Bitcoin rallied into the merge, right? It topped on the day of the merge. So why would Bitcoin dominance not rally into its having? It seems like a fairly likely outcome. We also know that, you know, Bitcoin has been sort of doing this sort of this pattern, right, where it, you know, it, it basically forms a low and then kind of stays around that low until it takes, until it wicks below it and then it gets another rally. So if you look closely at what Bitcoin has been doing, you might see that it's kind of been slowly bleeding here um, for, for a little bit of time. Do you see that wick right there? I, don't, I honestly don't know if it's going to get taken out. I, I really don't know. Um, there is a sort of a similar setup over here where uh, we took it out. And then right after we took it out, right, Bitcoin had sort of the next leg of its journey. And so I wonder if that is what needs to happen for Bitcoin to really kick back into gear, right? You know, does it have to take out that low just like it did over here in, you know, coincidentally, the last week of January? Now we are in the last week of March. If you look at, you know, if you go and look at, at, at some of these different se sort of seasonality things with it when it comes to Bitcoin, like if you look at, at year-to-date ROI with, uh, in, in 2024 and compare it to 2021 and 2017, you can actually see that Bitcoin sort of fell into a low about that last week of March before then getting another push higher. Now, in 2017, we actually had a more sustained push higher that went a lot higher. In 2021, we only briefly swept the prior highs and then we faded back down. So if you think about how that would relate to today, think about what Bitcoin has done in terms of those sort of those three different those three different waves that we saw 2019 and 2021 and then what it looked like over here, right? So if it were to mimic April of 2021, then it might only sweep the high. If it were to mimic 2017, then it would go well above the high. So how can we know what it's going to be, if at all? The first thing I will say is there's no such thing as a sure thing. There is a chance we don't even get another wave because maybe we get some awful data that comes out in April just before the halving. Maybe we go into the halving thinking like, oh, wait, this is going to be great. And then we get some awful data out of left field, like maybe the unemployment rate comes in at like 4.3% or something crazy that no one is expecting, right? So things like that could potentially throw Bitcoin off its game. So there's no guarantee. What I would say is as an invalidation of a potential third wave, whether it sweeps the highs or goes much higher, is does Bitcoin hold above its eight-week moving average? The eight-week moving average is a moving average that in 2021, once it was, once we fell below it, that was it. That was it. In 2019, once we fell below it, we had a we had a wick below it at, at one point, just slightly, right? Maybe like right here. But once we started getting weekly closes below it, that was it. Right? So look at this cycle, right? We did get sort of a, a wick below it as well. Um, maybe even a weekly close below it, but still fairly short-lived. We didn't visit the bull mark's warp band. That's the important thing, right? Over here, we did not visit the bull mark's warp band. 
Over here, we did not visit the bull marks warp band. Once the eight week falls and we visit the bull marks warp band, that's probably it for a while, right? I mean, it, you know, we probably have to cool off for at least three to six months, right? And that's what I said over here. I mean, going into the summer of 2021, I said, look, we're probably going to have a, a summer lull, right? Where you get at least three months where the price of Bitcoin goes down and, and just sort of bleeds for a while. Um, and the reason I said that was just sort of looking at what happened over here, right? A three to six month lull in the market. And that's what happens. So if you visit the 20 week SMA, it's probably not a good thing. The reason is because I, I, I believe we're too far gone to hold it at this point. I could be wrong about that. And maybe I'll provide a little bit of evidence to support why I'm wrong. But if you look at this, it has now been 21 weeks or so, 21, um, no, 22 weeks, right? It's been 22 weeks since we tested it. Normally, when you go that long, um, like 2019, it was 25 weeks, uh, 2021, it was 32 weeks, right? Normally, when you go that long without testing it, you're probably not going to hold it as support. In order to hold it as support, ideally, you're testing it every three to four months at the most, right? Once you go a longer period of time, um, like here, you can see that Bitcoin tested it in September 2017, didn't get back down to it until about 18 weeks later, right? We were too far gone to hold it as support. So I think that it, it sort of comes back to this idea of it's been too long since we tested it. And so the way to keep the party going is to just not test it. So the we're not even below the eight-week moving average right now. If we go below the eight-week moving average and we start trending towards the bull mark sort band, then you're likely not getting another wave, right? But as long as the eight-week SMA holds as support, then the party goes on. What's interesting, you remember that wick we were talking about earlier? It's this wick right here. We are very close to hitting that eight-week SMA. In fact, if you sort of expand out what this eight-week SMA might look like once we get another weekly close, you can see that it would actually correspond roughly to that prior wick, right around, you know, just below 60K, just below 60K. So if Bitcoin were to go slightly below 60K, Look to see what the reaction is. Does it get a similar reaction when we went below, slightly below 30, uh, 40K? When we went to 38, 39K, you see what happened? We swept the low and then we got to bounce up. If we do sweep that low, does it bounce up? There's no guarantee that we do sweep the low. There's, there are times where we get close and then we don't actually sweep it. Um, there was even an example in the, in the sort of the prior move that we got pretty close and then we ended up putting in a new high before sweeping it, right? You see this? You see this right here? Something like that could play out where you get pretty close. Everyone waits to buy the, the sweep of the low. Then instead of actually sweeping it, it goes up and puts in a new all-time high. Everyone, maybe not an all-time high, but a, a new high for the cycle, right? That was a new high for the cycle. Everyone FOMOs in because, oh, crap, they were waiting for this low. And then we go out and take the low. And then we go up, right? You sort of you, you rinse out people on both sides, right? The short-term traders. I don't take part in the short-term trading. I want to be clear. But you can see how anyone who was potentially trading that, if they were waiting for that level right there, or that they FOMO'd in because we broke above it, <laughs> you know, the, the, the people that were patient still, still got it. Um, and the people that didn't panic sell right here were rewarded right here. So again, I, I, I think it would be important to see what a potential reaction might be. Now, do you remember how we said that I think that altcoins are bleeding back to Bitcoin? You can see it everywhere, in my view, if you care to look. One of those is the fact that something like Ethereum, which I think is, is, is best viewed as sort of the index for the altcoin market, Ethereum already took out that wick. It already took it out. Bitcoin has not. That shows a lot of relative weakness by Ethereum, right? It shows a lot of weakness. Bitcoin has not taken it out yet. Ethereum already has. So if Bitcoin were to take it out, that means Ethereum could go much further down before getting another bounce up, right? Because again, it already took out the wick. So what happens if Bitcoin goes back below 60K, right? Does it probably goes a lot lower, right? You know, maybe it even goes to its bull mark support band. If you actually look at Ethereum back over here, 
in, in 2021, you can see that it actually had a rally up to, you know, around the same level, around $4,000. And then it had a pullback to the bull market support band around 2700 or so. So the funny thing is that level is is really close to where the bull market support band is about to be. So if Bitcoin were to fall in to that prior wick, if it were to fall into that prior wick, Ethereum could actually go back to its bull market support band. Even if Bitcoin doesn't, right? Bitcoin could actually still be above its eight-week moving average. Ethereum, if you look at its eight-week moving average, it already wicked below it, right? It already wicked below its eight-week moving average. You can see a clear weakness by Ethereum when you compare it to Bitcoin. So when you think about all Bitcoin pairs, next week is week 39, right? Next week is week 39. And that is exactly where the dead cat bounce by all Bitcoin pairs ended before the final plunge of altcoins on their Bitcoin pairs began. So it is true that liquidity has flowed from altcoins, from Bitcoin to altcoins over the last few weeks. But is it any different than what happened over here? In fact, from this wick low, all Bitcoin pairs topped out four weeks later. From this wick low, you can see we've already gone about two weeks. If you take it from the prior wick, which was not actually the low, right? It puts you at around three to four weeks. So I think this is what's playing out. I think a lot of people are assuming that because Bitcoin hit a new all-time high, they think that their alts are about to rally hard against Bitcoin. But I would argue it's going to be the exact opposite, that altcoins will flow back to Bitcoin as we go into the next several months. Because I, while I think that alts will, will, will bleed against Bitcoin into the halving, I think they will continue to bleed against Bitcoin after that as well. One thing to consider last cycle is that all Bitcoin pairs broke down one month before the Fed cut rates. One month. The Fed cut rates in July. All Bitcoin pairs broke down in June. The Fed is likely going to be cutting, at this point, they're saying June. So it sort of raises the question, well, are, you know, are we getting ahead of ourselves? Like, you know, could the altcoin market hold on throughout April and not fold? Because maybe the first rate cut is until June. And so that maybe would imply that alt Bitcoin pairs don't break down until May. I think that, you know, we only have one data point for that. And there's, you know, just because they broke down one month before rate cuts last cycle doesn't mean that they can't break down two months before rate cuts this cycle. Um, it also could mean that maybe they break down in April and then the Fed cuts in May because maybe the unemployment rate prints in the 4% range and, and people get spooked. So I don't know. I, I, it's really hard to say. I mean, obviously, a rate cut's not priced in for May by any stretch of the imagination, but that is one way to, you know, potentially think about this. So what happens with all Bitcoin pairs and how can it be useful in helping us to better understand whether Bitcoin will get a third rally? And if it does get a third wave to this, you know, to these sort of three waves, would it lead to another explosive 90% rally like the last two, right? I mean... These two were 90% rallies, 90%, 90%. If you look at, at, you know, these rallies over here, right? You had 60, 80, and 80, right? You had very similar types of moves. And again, here, 90, 100, and, and 100. You know, you can see they were all very similar. But this one was a failed third wave, right? You had 60, 60, and then only 30 where it swept the highs. It only swept the highs, and that was it. So how can we know? How can we know? 
the way that I think we can know, and I've said this many times before, the key to unlocking the secrets of the cryptoverse is the dominance of Bitcoin. Last cycle, Bitcoin topped precisely at the point that altcoins broke this support. This was the week of June 24th. Okay. Let's overlay Bitcoin USD onto this chart. What do you notice? Bitcoin topped right here. The week of June 24th. Let me go to the to a, a smaller time frame because it, it didn't actually include the wicks, right? But it, it was the week of June 24th when, when Bitcoin USD topped right here. And it topped precisely at the point that all Bitcoin pairs broke down. You see that? That is where Bitcoin topped. Exactly where all Bitcoin pairs broke down. The reason I think that's the case is because up until that point, there was all this liquidity sort of sloshing around between Bitcoin and altcoins, right? People, people were able to keep altcoins up with Bitcoin. So whenever Bitcoin rallied, there was this liquidity that was just sloshed back to Bitcoin. But then because Bitcoin was unable to break alt altcoins off their Bitcoin support levels, then it would just flow right back to the altcoin market. So basically, they both went up in tandem for a number of months. But what ended up happening was that we had a period where Bitcoin had an explosive move and alt finally broke down against the king. And that is what marked the top, the local top, before Bitcoin finally had a larger correction. That is what marked the local top. So it was where alt Bitcoin pairs broke down now look over here. They haven't broken down yet. The implication of that is that there is liquidity that will flow back to Bitcoin. Maybe the alt Bitcoin pairs are just coming back up to sweep these highs. Maybe they go all the way back up to this high over here, right? I mean, remember back over here when alt Bitcoin pairs had this final surge, they rallied up to about 0.53, right? It's possible that they go all the way back up to 0.51 or something before turning around. I don't know. I mean, next week would be the week that I imagine that whatever they're going to do is going to be next week, is my guess. But here's the thing. Whether they go up or not, what you'll notice with Bitcoin dominance is that it is falling into its own bull market support band. You can see it pretty clearly, right? It's falling into its own bull market support band. And if you look at this, right, if you look at this, it looks like, to me, that it's building up to a massive breakout. I know when it's going down, people don't like to believe it. But it look, and maybe this is just a fake out right here. But it looks like it's building up to something. And I'm arguing that even if alt Bitcoin pairs rally for one more week, I still think Bitcoin dominance will hold. And I think we're going to get an explosive move to the upside. So I, my own portfolio has been Bitcoin heavy for a long time because Bitcoin is the safest, it's the, it's the least risky asset in the cryptoverse. In addition to being the least, risk, yes, the least risky asset, it's gaining market share. So it's outperforming most altcoins. There are a few that are, it, it, that are outperforming Bitcoin. Like, and my, I, I tip my hat to them. But most are bleeding back to the kink. So I think that it's building up to a massive breakout, likely coming in April. What do you notice about alt Bitcoin pairs when they finally started to turn? Remember what I said? They topped out here on the 30 on week 39, right here, week 39. What do you notice? This was week 39. They broke down on week 41. 
week 41. That's where they broke support. That's where Bitcoin topped. What, what week is week 41? Would you care to guess? What week is week 41? <laughs> it's April 8th, the week of April 8th. So legitimately, just before the halving, right? Just before the halving. Because that's, you know, a, a couple of weeks from now, right? So you can think about this in the sense that, like, it seems that we could very well play out in the exact same way that it played out back over here in, in you know, in, in 2019. I think that a lot of people have a hard time comparing this to 2019 because we've put in new all-time highs. And that's why they think that Bitcoin will ultimately, you know, they, they, a lot of people are saying that it, it, it'll it'll flow back to altcoins because Bitcoin's, you know, it, it, it's hit a new high and that's what they think should happen. But I'm, I'm, I, I don't think so. I really don't think so. I, I think that I think that the altcoin market is about to, to get demolished by Bitcoin as it goes into its halving. I don't know what's going to happen next week, right? I put this video out now knowing that next week I'm probably going to be eating my words for a few days. But we are looking at almost the identical setup. Almost the identical setup. And it was on that third week <coughs> after all Bitcoin pairs topped that Bitcoin USD finally topped. So Bitcoin USD rallied into the merge. What? Or sorry, not the merge. Bitcoin USD, well, it did rally into the merge because ETH was going up, right? Back then, ETH was leading for, for a, a period. Bitcoin USD rallied into the spot ETF. If it rallies into the halving, what can we expect? Now, it's going to be very easy for anyone to put out a price prediction on what could happen, right? I see all sorts of predictions. Some people are calling for 100K, 70K, 75K. I've seen 75K a lot. I've seen you know, the 80 to 90s, I've seen 100, I, I've seen, you know, one, 150, I've even seen 300. I mean, some people put out a million, but it's hard to take that seriously, right? It ranges. How can we know, right? I mean, I, I think that everyone has a valid point, you know? I mean, in April of 2021, I mean, almost literally exactly three years ago, Bitcoin put in a high in March, and then it only barely took it out in April. So what happens if that happens, right? What happens if we just barely take it out? Just like we did in July of 2023, we barely took out this high. It was sort of a failed final wave. You know, what if that happens? How can we know? How can we know? I think the answer is have altcoins broken down. As long as they haven't, I think it's risk on. I've said that before. Risk on until 56% Bitcoin dominance, 56%. Once you hit 56%, I think we likely go to risk off, but I think we'll have to come back and see all right, how do things look um, and, and maybe reassess. But what I'm saying right now is, I don't know. I really don't know, but I would say we need to get to 56% Bitcoin dominance first, is my view. We need to get to 56% dominance first. Once we get there, I think it'll be time to reassess. 56% Bitcoin dominance. So if you look at, at these prior range highs over here by dominance, 56% is what would correspond to us breaking these prior range highs, right? Because these are at 55.3% or so, 55.2, something like that, right? So in order for us to get to 56%, we, we already know that it's been, it's been getting up to 55% while alt Bitcoin pairs keep hugging those range lows, right? So if alt Bitcoin pairs go back down to the range lows, then we're still likely not at 56%. We also need them to break support. We need them to break support and go to 0.39. That's what needs to happen in my view. Again, my bias at the beginning of the video. But that's what I think needs to happen is that all Bitcoin pairs need to go back down to the range lows 
but then they need to break. The week that they break, I think, is the week that Bitcoin USD finally gets a larger pullback. That's what I think. <coughs> so if you're wanting to know, what does that mean for Bitcoin? How high can it go? It depends on what alt Bitcoin pairs do between now and then. There is a case to be made either way, and I want to go through both as in detail, as much detail as I can, okay? So case number one would be that, look at this. Let me, let me find, a, there's, there's, a, there's a way to look at this where you can kind of get a, a pretty good example of the, the behavior of altcoins and as it relates to Bitcoin. So overlay Bitcoin USD onto this chart and you can find, if you look very closely, you can find some periods where alt Bitcoin pairs start to go down while Bitcoin's going down. Meaning that when Bitcoin then turns back up, it doesn't have as much liquidity to sort of suck back in because altcoins were bleeding against Bitcoin while Bitcoin was going down. Remember earlier when we were showing how ETH has already taken out the wick, right? It's already taken out the wick that Bitcoin has not yet taken out. And so if Bitcoin were to take out that wick, ETH could go even lower, maybe even all the way back to its bull marks work ban, right? There's a chance that that happens. If, if, if Bitcoin runs the, the lows of its own wick, that ETH Bitcoin could, could go lower because ETH already ran the wick and Bitcoin didn't. There's relative weakness there by Ethereum. So there's times where Bitcoin goes down and alt Bitcoin pairs go down. And you can see that actually really carefully. You can see that if you look really carefully right here. Do you see alt Bitcoin pairs? So right here is where Bitcoin USD found a low mid-June. See that? Mid-June right there. Alt Bitcoin pairs found a low. But look what happened to alt Bitcoin pairs just before that low. They were falling off a cliff so that by the time that Bitcoin finally got its third and final wave of sort of that three wave move, it didn't have as much fuel in the tank to get back down to, to get alt Bitcoin pairs down to 0.4, right? From that point, it was only from 0.44 down to 0.4. There wasn't enough. There just wasn't enough. If, if Bitcoin's rally had started when alt Bitcoin pairs were at 0.48, then maybe it would have had enough to go all the way up to 40K back then. But it didn't, right? All Bitcoin pairs had already started bleeding from 0.48 while Bitcoin USD was going down. So that when Bitcoin finally turned the corner, there just wasn't as much liquidity in the altcoin market that Bitcoin could suck back in. Therefore, Bitcoin only marginally swept the high. You see that, right? So it's pretty clear, right? It's pretty clear. Clear as mud, as they say. Um, but in other cases, right? In other cases, you will find, you know, almost the exact opposite, right? Where, you know, you, you'll, you'll get a uh, sort of a, a scenario where if all Bitcoin pairs are at 0.48, when Bitcoin USD bottoms, then Bitcoin has all of this liquidity to take. And then you get a more substantial rally. Do you see it? Right? It had, well, it only it only went through here, but it 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 easily took out these prior highs, right? But it was because there was all this extra liquidity in alts, right? They were at 0.48 already, so it had it was able to draw on that for a long time. Same thing right here, right? I mean, you know, when when Bitcoin started this rally, from, you know, from sort of mid-January, alt Bitcoin pairs were up at 0.47. So plenty of liquidity to give. And you can see that when Bitcoin USD topped, right? I mean, Bitcoin USD rallied throughout this entire thing <coughs> and it got alt Bitcoin pairs back down to the range lows and that acted as fuel. So right now, alt Bitcoin pairs have conveniently worked their way back up to 0.48, right? So if you want to know if there's a third wave, which no one fully knows, maybe you get a black swan next week and all this analysis is rendered invalid, but alt Bitcoin pairs are back up to 0.48. Does Bitcoin bottom 
while alt Bitcoin pairs are at 0.48. We know that there is some seasonality that Bitcoin can find lows sort of late March, right? We can see that pretty clearly by looking at 2017 and 2021. If Bitcoin bottoms with alt Bitcoin pairs at 0.48, then it would imply that there is a lot of fuel for Bitcoin that it can take from the altcoin market just to get back down to the range lows. Right? You can see that, you know, previously when Bitcoin rallied, when alt Bitcoin pairs were at 0.48, it had a much more substantial rally. When all Bitcoin pairs were at 0.44, when the rally began, it was a failed final wave where we just swept the high. Has Bitcoin bottomed yet is a question, right? That's sort of the next relevant question. Well, I imagine the answer to that is whether we sweep the low or not and whether we hold the eight week or not. If Bitcoin has to sweep this low before we find out what, what this is going to bring us, then there is a chance that altcoins bleed before Bitcoin actually puts in its sort of final short-term low before getting a pump, right? So again, there's a lot of shorter-term traders. I'm not a short-term trader, right? There's a lot of short-term traders that are saying, hey, like maybe we need to sweep this low just like we swept the low back over here. So what I'm saying here is if it sweeps the low, where are all Bitcoin pairs? You know, have they bled down to 0.44? Because ETH USD is, you know, it already swept the low. And so if Bitcoin were to go back down to the prior low again, then, and if Ethereum goes all the way down and say, you know, to its bull marks warp band, then you could get a situation where, I mean, note that alt Bitcoin pairs do not include ETH. You'd have to look at total two, but just the same idea applies to a lot of altcoins, right? So what I would look for, right? What I would look for, if Bitcoin can start to get a strong move without all Bitcoin pairs going any lower than 0.48, then the implication is that it has more fuel to go higher into a blow off top, which I know a lot of people want. On the other hand, if all Bitcoin pairs bleed to 0.44, kind of like over here before Bitcoin bottomed, then you might get a situation where you only sweep the high, right? Like you you go slightly higher than the prior high, but you only sweep it. Kind of like July 2023, kind of like, you know, April of, of 2021, right? So those are cases where we only swept the highs. If alts bleed against Bitcoin before Bitcoin bottoms. That's case number one. And if you sweep the high, then, you know, sort of the obvious place to look at would be 75K, right? It's right above 70. It's right above the prior high. It's, um, you know, a, a nice number that everyone's going to be looking at. 75K would be sort of the, the, the level that you would have to get by, right? If you get by that, then, you know, there's, there's plenty of more room. So if all Bitcoin pairs are at 0.44, when Bitcoin finds a local bottom, then it might imply only sweeping the high. If alt Bitcoin pairs, on the other hand, are at 0.48 and you start to see a Bitcoin rally materialize, then what? Then it might have more fuel, right? So then you start to look at these prior waves by Bitcoin, noting that all of these basically, you know, were, were these sort of these three waves, right? You had one wave, you had two waves, and you had three waves. Right, one, two, three. One, two, three, failure, failed wave. One, two, what's the third wave gonna be? Right, what's the third wave gonna be? So, what would it be if it ends up a similar percentage as these waves? Well, this was 98%. This was 90%. So let's just say 90%. Well, 90% from what, right? We don't, we don't necessarily know what the low is. I mean, 
you know, if you were to take a bar pattern from this sort of top right there, just to see what that low ended up being, it was 58, 59K, right? It swept the prior low. You see that? So if you were to take a 90% rally from that level, that gets you into the 100s, right? Now, coincidentally, the highest risk metric not the, on the risk metric that has done a great job, by the way, of, of finding the lows and finding at least the first high in 2021, if you look at the risk metric, the 0.9 wristband starts at just over 100K. So that would be your blow off top, right? If you go into the six figures, right into the halving. So will it be a potential blow off top into six figures going into the halving? Or will it be a sweep of the prior high? Will it just be a sweep of the prior high? Or is all of this void because something nasty happens in early April? You know, one of the things, if you think about when Bitcoin started this rally, right, it, it really started in late January, but when did it really get moving, right? It, it, it got to move up the last week of January, right? And then it paused until what happened? Until the unemployment rate numbers came in, until the labor market reported data. You see that? You can see it pretty clearly if you look at... um. Um, right here, right? So the labor market data came in at 3.9. And right when it came in, after this short consolidation, then Bitcoin started moving. So what happens if the same thing plays out again, right? What happens if maybe Bitcoin sweeps the low, bounces back up sort of that last week of March, early April, until you get the labor market data, and then it decides what it's going to do, Right? Maybe the labor market data comes in at 3.9 and the market likes it and then it starts its more, you know, a more impressive rally. Or maybe it comes in at a really high number, the market doesn't like it and then it's just a failure. And then we, we all you know, basically then play chess all summer, right? Um, you know, and again, I mean, you know, the extent to, to a potential third wave would be, you know, does you know, how, how, you know, where is the labor market, right? I mean, the worst it is, right? I mean, if, if, if the labor market data comes in really, really bad, then altcoins might not really like that. And, and you could see that liquidity flow to Bitcoin a lot quicker because a lot of people would say, well, if the labor market's starting to show signs of weakness, then you really want to be in the safest asset within each asset class. So you don't want to be in the riskier assets. So that money could, you know, easily flow back to Bitcoin. So that's what I would be looking at. And, and again, like it, it might be frustrating that I'm not going to just unilaterally say that this is where the price of Bitcoin is going to go because at the end of the day, I don't know. Right? At the end of the day, I don't know. But I do think that by looking at, at, at Bitcoin dominance and alt Bitcoin pairs, we can better understand how high Bitcoin could go, right? Whether it's a sweep of the high, whether it could be a lower high. If I mean, imagine if, you know, one, one potential outcome <coughs> that we didn't really talk about is what happens if all Bitcoin pairs bleed and they go back down to 0.4 while Bitcoin's going down, right? That's another outcome. And, you know, that doesn't happen as frequently, but it does happen, right? There are some cases where it has occurred, right? One example of where it actually occurred was in 2022. In fact, right, if you look right here, Bitcoin, you know, all Bitcoin pairs swept this low in June of 2022, on a Bitcoin drop, right? It was a pretty large Bitcoin drop. And during that drop, all Bitcoin pairs swept this low, right? And then they didn't actually break the low until right there in March of 2023, right as basically Bitcoin found this local low and then started moving up. So at the end of the day, it was a Bitcoin rally that took all Bitcoin pairs off support but there was a Bitcoin dump that took the alt Bitcoin pairs back down to this level in the first place before they bounced. So that is a potential outcome that is also worth considering. And 
the only way that I could really see that, or the main way, not the only way, but the main way that I could see that happening would be if, again, if like the labor market, if there's just some nasty event that happens in April that is no one is on no one's radar, right? Could be you get a negative print in non-farm payroll, right? Could be unemployment rate comes in not just at 4%, but like 4.3% or something crazy, you know? It, it could be any number of those things. Where, I mean, 4.3% at the end of the day is not that crazy. I mean, it's still pretty low by the historical standard, but the rate of change would be concerning. So that is a way where it could play out in a way that no one wants, right? But still, I mean, you still have to have it in the back of your mind. So if you don't have this on your trading view, right, I think you should add it. It's just total three minus USDT divided by Bitcoin. <coughs> I think I, I really do think it will tell us when Bitcoin USD tops. I think that the week that all Bitcoin pairs break this level is the time is when Bitcoin tops. Is my guess. Whether it's a sweep of the high, a higher high, you know, it could be a much higher high if it ends up, if, if all Bitcoin pairs are at 0.48 when Bitcoin USD finds a local low. Could theoretically be a lower high, I suppose, if something nasty happens in April. But that's why I reference sort of risk on until all Bitcoin pairs break down. Risk on until Bitcoin dominance goes to 56%. If you don't believe, if you don't buy my views on Bitcoin dominance, then none of this analysis is relevant to you. Absolutely none of it. And that probably applies to more people than I, I, I would hope that it would apply to. Because I, I think that, you know, back over here, no one wanted to believe that the dominance of Bitcoin was going to go up. And then somewhere over here, once it broke through the range highs, people got on board now, all I've seen people do is try to call the top on it every step of the way, right? I mean, the people that said it was going to break down over here, they said it topped here, they said it topped here, they said it topped here, and then they keep saying it's topped, and they just keep patting themselves on the back when it doesn't break out to a new high for a few months, but then you give it a few months, and then it breaks out to a new high. I get to celebrate for about, you know, about one week, and as I celebrate that my, you know, sort of my views on Bitcoin dominance being correct, I only get a few days to celebrate it. Before then, it, it basically just consolidates or gets a very nasty correction where then everyone gets to come back and say, oh, look at you. You were celebrating, but look at that. It just ended up being another high that you were celebrating. But guys, I mean, this is what dominance does. It, it, it rallies really quickly, and then it does nothing for like three months, right? It rallies really quickly, does nothing. Quickly, bleed. Again, this is a huge consolidation period. Now, here's where it gets tricky for the altcoin market. Here's where it gets tricky, because I'm arguing that dominance is going to 56%, but I don't think it's stopping there. I think it's going to go to 60%, even though Bitcoin USD could top out when all Bitcoin pairs break down. Bitcoin USD last cycle topped out when Bitcoin dominance broke out. But Bitcoin dominance still went up from 62.5%. From the breakout point, it went up all the way to 72%, right? It went from 62 to 72, even though Bitcoin USD had topped at the breakout point, right? Even though Bitcoin USD had topped here, when Bitcoin dominance broke out, Bitcoin dominance still rallied from June until September, so you're talking about, you know, two to three more months because it was really the really end, the, the, the end of June that Bitcoin topped out. So really two to three months that Bitcoin dominance just kept on going up even after Bitcoin USD had topped out. So while I think that it's true that Bitcoin dominance will go to 56%, I've had a lot of people say, well, you used to say 60%. Guys, to get to 60%, you first have to go to 56%. One thing I've tried to do a better job of you know, back over here when dominance was at, you know, 38%, I said it's going to 60%, right? I was like, I, look, it's going to 60%. And 
every time it gets a move up and then goes back down, then you know, sort of the the trolls come out, right, and say, well, it didn't go to sixty percent, you know, but it 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 has just kept on putting in higher lows. So I, I sometimes I think like putting in sort of like some more realistic short term targets could be helpful, right? Rather than just saying sixty percent, let's just say first, hey, get us to fifty six percent, and that will sort of confirm whether this analysis is even right. If you don't get to 56%, then why should we keep spend too much time talking about 60? Um, but this is what I think is going to happen. So we can actually understand a lot, too, about all USD pairs in this move. Because there's a lot of examples that we could look at, but let's, let's just look at the altcoin market in general. Do you see... All USD pairs here in June of 2019, they put in a high, right? And then when Bitcoin got its final move where all Bitcoin pairs broke down, all USD pairs still went up, but they didn't go up that much, right? Here's the thing. Bitcoin USD during that final rally into rate cuts in 2019, <coughs> Bitcoin USD went up from here. It went up 88%. But what I'd like to show you is not from there. What did it do from the prior high? It went up 55%, 54%. Total three, though, from the prior high only went up 13%. Bitcoin leads the bull market, especially a quantitative tightening high interest rate bull market. Alts only barely went higher despite the fact that Bitcoin USD went 50% higher. So a lot of you guys might be looking at this in the next few weeks and maybe Bitcoin's doing pretty well and you're sitting there thinking, you know, what is Ben saying? Because he said alts were going <coughs> to not do that well. If Bitcoin goes up on its USD pair, of course, I mean, alts can go up, right? I'm not arguing that they can't go up. But I don't care about all USD pairs. I care, I care about their Bitcoin pairs. And what do you notice about right here? What do you notice about that, that area right there from May to June? All USD pairs put in a higher high while all Bitcoin pairs, all Bitcoin pairs from you know June to July broke down. You can see the same exact thing happening again uh, on a lot of specific altcoins. Now, I mean, it's not, you know, it, it's not just Ethereum. Even though I know we talked about a lot about Ethereum, another great example is 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 Cardano, right? It's a, it's another almost perfect example of the same exact thing. Look at look at at ADA USD, right? Look at ADA USD in 2019. It put in a high. And then it swept the high on Bitcoin's final rally, on its third wave, right? It swept the high. You see that? It swept the high. So ADA USD put in a higher high, but what, what did ADA Bitcoin do? It put in a much lower high, right? You see that? ADA USD higher high, ADA Bitcoin lower high. Now fast forward to today. It, is it not? Is it not the same? Higher high, lower high? Is it not? I, it seems like it's the same. And I'm not saying that ADA USD can't go back up. I mean, if Bitcoin rallies, I mean, look at this. I mean, ADA USD put in a high, came back down, put another high. I mean, it, you know, it spent several weeks doing that, right? It, it spent several weeks just sort of <coughs> in that in that zone. What if it does the same thing again, right? You see that? Look look closely at these at these three moves. You see ADA USD right here, the first high, and then you had a peak, another peak, and then you had sort of a final one. And look at look at now. Right, you sort of had your first one. Right, look at this. Your first one, and then you got a couple here. Right? I'm not saying we can't go back. I'm not saying it can't necessarily go back up. I just I, I can't find a compelling reason to be in 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 this over over Bitcoin because I don't care if it's putting in uh, you know I, I don't care if it's putting in 
a higher high on its USD pair. I, I care about its Bitcoin pair and its Bitcoin pair is still bleeding. You know, it's still it's still just going down. By the way, I mean, you know, some of these alts have already broken down <coughs> against against Bitcoin. Matic Bitcoin, for example, has already broken down. Look at it. I'm not saying it can't occasionally get a, a rally back up, but you guys know how we were talking about the uh, the the summer 2022 lows. Matic Bitcoin already dropped below it. You know, some of these altcoins are already breaking support with Bitcoin. Some of them broke support long ago. Ave Bitcoin broke support long ago. Look at this. This is the uh, the summer 2022 low. It broke that support back in 2023. <coughs> but now you're starting to get more and more alts that are getting back down to these range lows, right? Look at dot Bitcoin, right? It's slowly fading back in. Same thing, right? Dot Bitcoin, lower high, while dot USD, higher high. So why are the alts going up? Is it because they're doing something that's, you know, can, you know, sort of, are, are they, are they outperforming Bitcoin, right? Are they leading the market? No, they're only going up because Bitcoin's going up. Otherwise, these alt, you know, the, the, a lot of these alt Bitcoin pairs wouldn't be putting in lower highs. Now, yes, is it true that some of them are putting in higher highs? Absolutely. <coughs> and some have been stronger. Look at AVAX Bitcoin. AVAX Bitcoin Still a lower high, AVAX USD, higher high. Solana Bitcoin, that, that might be one that has been has, has actually been better, right? You can see a Sol Bitcoin, higher high, Sol USD, higher high. So there are some exceptions to the rule, right? There always are some exceptions to the rule, but that doesn't negate the trend, right? It doesn't negate the trend. And the trend is that alt USD pairs, alt USD pairs, are likely going to put in sort of this higher high, but I think that all Bitcoin pairs are going to put in a lower high, meaning they're going to just start to bleed back down, and then that'll be it. Okay. So that's where I stand on on the market. Um, again, I, I don't know for sure if <coughs> if we will run the highs again into April. I, I think that. Given we rallied into the spot ETF, given the fact that ETH rallied into the merge, no, that ETH rallied into the merge, but it was a lower high, right? I, again, like that's just sort of like a counterpoint that you have to consider. Like ETH USD, you know, I mean, I know that ETH Bitcoin put in a higher high into the merge, but ETH USD put in a lower high into the merge. If you look at 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 ETH USD, it topped. It had this top. Sorry, what am I looking at here? Um, I think I inverted this. Yeah. So if you look at ETH USD, you can see that it put in a, a top there in August and it was a lower high in September. So that's why I've said before, right? Like there's no guarantee that it even has to be a higher high. It could be a lower high. The only way I know to really figure this out is by looking at the alt Bitcoin pairs to know if there's liquidity that Bitcoin can tap into or not. So what is it? It's an if-then statement. If Bitcoin starts to rally, <coughs> if Bitcoin starts to rally and, and it starts to move into the halving and all Bitcoin pairs haven't broken down yet, then the implication is that it can keep, you know, it can keep rising into that until all Bitcoin pairs do break down. If all Bitcoin pairs start to come down before Bitcoin USD bottoms, and then Bitcoin USD bottoms, and then alt Bitcoin pairs come down some more, then you might get a situation where it only sweeps the prior high. If, on the other hand, Bitcoin bottoms and alt, US, and alt Bitcoin pairs are way up here, then perhaps you get a third rally that leads you into a, a blow-off top just before the Fed cuts rates. Remember, last cycle, Bitcoin had a blow-off top just before the Fed cut rates. Look at... Look at 2019, right? You see that Bitcoin had a blow off top as rate cuts arrived. 
And again, I mean, even if even if we take out the prior high, there's no guarantee that you go to six figures. You could. There's no guarantee. How do you know when it's going to stop? It all goes back to have altcoins broken down against Bitcoin. If they have, there's a good chance that's it. You know, you could top out below <coughs> the, you know, maybe there's a lot of people waiting for 100K and then we just kind of only go to 80 or something, right? Or 90. Um, I don't know. You know, I've, I've done this for a long time and I've had varying degrees of success at different times sort of putting out price predictions. Sometimes they work out really well. A lot of times you just kind of regret, regret doing it because... Um, unless you nail it perfectly, there's, there's just really no forget, there's no forgiving of it, right? If you say that like, it's going to go up to X and then we reach that price target and then you flip bearish and then the price just keeps going up, even though you were right, I mean, you know, you were, you were still too bearish. If on the other hand, you put out a price target that's too high and you don't reach it, then everyone will get mad because, uh, well, you, you know, they, they miss selling it because they were waiting on your price target. So I don't, I, I don't think it's that relevant to talk about USD price targets because I, I haven't really met anyone that can consistently say where it's going to go in its USD pair. I mean, you can meet a lot of people that will give you, um, you know, price targets, uh, but <coughs> how many times do those price targets, like on a specific date, actually hit that level and then stop at their price target and then only go down? It does happen sometimes, right? But I, I haven't really found anyone that consistently do it. Um, you know, time and time again. Sometimes people get it right. I think the best way to to, to sort of think about when the top, uh, when we go from risk on to risk off is when do all Bitcoin pairs break down? So let's see what Bitcoin does here. Um, we do know that we're getting into some seasonality where you should be able to find a local low if one is going to form and if we're going to rally into the halving. See if... We run the wick. Um, if we don't run the wick and we do something like that, I mean, imagine if we did that, if we repeated that, where we get close, kind of like here, and then you rally up, put in a, maybe you go, maybe you do go to 75K or something, and then you come down and then you go up, right? I mean, that could happen. Um, or if it just goes straight down and then, you know, there's, there's certainly a lot of different ways that it could play out. Um, but I, I would just keep that pattern in mind where it got close, ran the highs, then went down and then rallied. Um, so a lot of things to consider. I've been talking forever. That is, you know, essentially some dubious speculation. There's another thing, I, a couple of other things I wanted to look at that are kind of unrelated to, to altcoins, but I just wanted them to be on your radar. And that is the, the, um, the extension from the 20-week and the relative strength index. So a couple of things that I, I, I think are pretty um pretty frothy hand wavy like i don't really think these are really that great to look at but if you look at at the relative strength index of bitcoin on the monthly right if you look at first on the monthly and you look at at this general trend line here it would imply that there is still room um for the monthly rsi to go higher right that would be the implication um if it's going to sort of connect all of these prior dots Right. So that's one thing. Right. And again, 2019, we had a move, but then it sort of fell back down and then we went up to it later. So keep that in mind. Right. If we don't tag it, it could play out like that. Like if if Bitcoin only sweeps the high, then it could play out like this. Right. Where it then falls back in and then gets another move up maybe in the in the post having year. But <coughs> on the other hand, if Bitcoin does get a strong rally into the halving, then maybe this monthly RSI, if it were to go to say like 89 or 90, like imagine it hits 90, that might be a, a very strong risk off signal that could easily correspond with Bitcoin's risk metric hitting that highest risk band. The, the other thing though to look at is not just the monthly, there's also the two week. If you look at the two week, it looks pretty extended already, right? I mean, like we, there's no doubt about that this rally has been one hell of a rally. Right, and if you connect these dots, I mean, we've already tagged it. Um, but the counterpoint to the fact that we've tagged it is that we also tagged it in January of 2021, and then it just started putting in a series of lower highs. Right, just put a series of lower highs, um, even though Bitcoin put in a series of of higher highs. Right. So here again, you know, there's an example right here in 2013 
where it put it, it sort of hit that trend line, but then it still went slightly higher, like a, you know, a month, a few, a few weeks later, right? It's slightly higher. Some other times though, it, it does mark the top, right? Sometimes it, when it tags the trend line, that's the top, right? You can see right there, right here, when it tagged the trend line, that was the top. Let me fix this, right? So when it tagged that trend line, that was the top. And then here, when it tagged this trend line, that was the top. But here, we went slightly higher. And in 2021, we went slightly higher, even though the two-week RSI had been tagged. So if you do see this go back up, it's currently at 78. It already went up to about 87. So if you do see it go back up, <coughs> I would say, um, you know, and by the way, we're about to see a two-week close tomorrow, right? I mean, well, if you're watching today, if you're watching the video today, because I mean, I, it's 11.58 as I record this. Um, so by the time you're watching it, it's already going to be, you know, the next day. Um, so if, if, if this comes back up and tags the trend line again, perhaps that would be, you know, somewhat telling. The other thing to look at is the extension from the 20 week moving average. So if you look at the short term bubble risk, of Bitcoin, what you'll notice is that we've gone higher, right? I mean, so the, the, the prior local tops really only exceeded the 20-week SMA by approximately 40%, right? So if you were to look at, at this rally right here, um, it was about 40% above the 20-week SMA. This one here was about 40% above, uh, above it as well. Um, or sorry, no, not that one. Uh, this one right here, right? This one right here, about 40% above it. Right now, we're about 34% above it, but we did go up to about 55% above it in early March, right? So what would be 55% above the 20-week SMA as it stands today? Well, really, we're going to get a weekly close really soon. So let's just sort of extrapolate out here just another week, and we go 55% above that. 55% above that would, in fact, get you to 75K, right? So if you think about this trend line that we looked previously, the, the natural log of the price over the 20 week moving average, what do you notice about this, right? There's a trend line here of diminishing volatility. Now I will be the first to say <coughs> this trend line has to break, right? It has to <coughs> eventually because it's a downward trend line, right? I mean, eventually if it doesn't break, then it just implies that the price of Bitcoin, you know, like if you, if you extend this trend line forever, eventually it'll go below zero, right? Meaning that Bitcoin would never be above its 20 week moving average, which doesn't make sense. I mean, it would still likely be above its 20 week moving average at some point, even if the price were to go down for a while. So at some point the trend line has to break, but who knows when it breaks. But if you sort of connect the dots, um, you can see, you know, that dot would be at about 0.47, right? Let's, let's, let's extrapolate it out to April 22nd <laughs> about 0.47. So then what you do is you go over to, you know, you can go over to Wolfram Alpha. You can say the natural log of the price divided by the 20 week SMA equals X, right? So this is going to equal X. In this case, we just figured out what X is. <coughs> X is 0.47 or 0.46. Let's just say 0.47 because it's close enough. So X is 0.47. So then what is the price? Right? What is the price? So you say X over the 20 week moving average. Well, what is the 20 week moving average? The 20 week moving average right now is at 47.5K. It's hard to really know what it's going to be in three weeks. Um, I think I think I actually have a tool that extrapolates. Let me see if I can find this. Um, here we go. Forecast. <coughs> so let's hide this. So this is a forecast of the 20 week moving average. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, all right, well, what is the week of say like April 8th or April 15th, right? You're looking at around 51, 52K for the 20 week moving average, right? Based on this forecast of the 20 week moving average, based on a constant price. So it's assuming the price stays constant. You might be wondering, how are you forecasting it? It's just that the price stays constant. This is what the 20 week moving average would do. <laughs> so let's suppose by April, the 20 week is at 52K. So then you just say X divided by 52K equals 
right? And then if you do that, that gets you <coughs> to 83K. 83K. So 83K would get you to that trend line. If you draw it, if you connect this dot to these. If you're more conservative and you connect this dot with this one in 2017, then we've already effectively broken, right? I mean, we've already wicked above it just like we did over here in 2021, right? Um, again, it's not a perfect line. I mean, it's just, it gets you in the neighborhood, it gets you in the neighborhood. Um, but I mean, you know, like, I mean, it had sort of a double top right there. Maybe you do the same thing again, right? Where it goes up to, um, you know, 0.44, right? And if you say, if you take it from 0.44 with a natural log of the price over the 20 week estimate, the 20 week estimate being 52K by April, that gets you 80K, right? So I mean, it, it's got. I mean, it's got to be frustrating, right? I mean, not really knowing what price that would actually correspond to if we do see that move happen. <coughs> but my response would just simply be, guys, just look at all Bitcoin pairs. I mean, if they break down, that could mark the top. Is there a chance that all Bitcoin pairs break down, and Bitcoin just keeps on going up? Absolutely. I mean nothing's off the table, right? I'm not going to sit here and say that it can't happen. But you can see that all Bitcoin pairs have a very uncanny ability to sort of show the liquidity in the crypto, sort of the, the flow of liquidity in the cryptoverse, right? We just go from one extreme to the other. We go from maxi season to, to you know, to sort of degen season, right? Back to maxi, back to degen, maxi, degen, maxi, degen. I think that the next turn is going to break it. It was the next turn last cycle that broke it, right? <coughs> so just something to think about. There's also one thing I've, I've thought about too before, and that's, um, do you know how like here, this was like September 2018, and then this was July or June 2019. This here was July 2023. Right, so this was September to July, right? I mean, not not quite July, like May or sorry June. This was of the bear market year. This was of the pre having year. Right, it's about three quarters, right? About three quarter difference. I've always wondered, and I don't know how much I've expressed this on YouTube. I think I've expressed it a few other places, but <coughs> do you see though how like this low occurred in the bear market year? but then this low occurred in the pre-having year. About three quarters later, right? This low in this cycle was three quarters or so before this one. One thing I've thought about a lot, and I haven't expressed it that much on, the, on, on, on YouTube because I, I, I'm not really that married to the idea, but I do wonder if the merge Maybe that sort of excuse, it, it could just be that all this, you know, all the liquidity, but the merge occurred about three quarters later after the, the Bitcoin top, right? It, it occurred in September. So about, about three quarters after, you know, after 2022 began, um, and really the bear market was, was well underway three quarters later. I, I wonder if, if that has had an impact, right? Where like, there was a lot of hype. And, and and mania going into the merge that it's like it kind of delayed the entire process of alt Bitcoin pairs by three quarters <clears throat> because the merge was about three quarters later after the top of, of, of Bitcoin USD. The range low here was put in about three quarters. Sorry, the range low here was put in about three quarters before this one, or sorry, after this one, right? Three quarters after this one in its respective cycle, right? This low here, May of 2019, this low here, March. Again, this one here of the following, of the having year. So this was, this was May of the pre-having year. This was March of the having year. 
So once again, about three quarters later, right? So what if the final break of alt Bitcoin pairs occurs about three quarters after it actually broke down in 2019? Three quarters later, right? This broke down in like June, July. Two quarters later gets you to the end of, of the year, right? Of the, of the end of 2023. You add a quarter to that, it gets you to March. That nine to 10 month window, we've been seeing a, a, a pattern. Nine to 10 months later is April. It's April. It's almost here. It's almost here. So that's my view on the market. That is some dubious speculation for you. Um, I think the secret, I think the key to unlocking the secrets of the cryptoverse lie with the dominance of Bitcoin. Can be interpreted through alt Bitcoin pairs because that gives you insight into the liquidity moving around within the cryptoverse. A lot of people are assuming that liquidity from Bitcoin is about to flow to alts. <coughs> How many times have you heard someone say ETH outperforms Bitcoin in the bull market? How many times have you heard someone say that over the last two years, right? How many times? It's been nonstop. But narratives are one thing. The data is another. And if you look at quarterly returns of ETH Bitcoin, it has been read five quarters in a row, right? Leave the narrative at the door, okay? The people that said ETH is going to hold up well against Bitcoin or that it was going to lead the bull market or that ETH outperforms Bitcoin in a bull market, they've been wrong, you know? I keep people, I keep, people keep asking me, like, well, what if you're wrong about ETH Bitcoin? It's been read five quarters in a row, right? I mean, how, how can the people, you know, how can the people that have been bullish on it since the merge claim that they were right, you know? It's been five quarters at this point. So I would agree that ETH Bitcoin can do well. ETH can outperform Bitcoin in the bull market, but it has to be, a QE bull market, not a QT bull market. If you look at ETH Bitcoin and you overlay Bitcoin USD, what do you notice? What do you notice about this? There is this Bitcoin bull market, but ETH Bitcoin went down and it broke that range low. There's this bull market. But ETH Bitcoin's going down very close to breaking the range low. There is this bull market where ETH Bitcoin went up. <coughs> but guess what? Sorry, let me fix that. When ETH Bitcoin went down, it was during quantitative tightening. When ETH Bitcoin went up during a Bitcoin USD bull market, it was during quantitative easing. Everyone keeps saying, a lot of people keep saying that ETH outperforms Bitcoin in a bull market. In a QE bull market, I would agree, but that's not what we're in. We're in a QT bull market where ETH Bitcoin goes down as Bitcoin goes up because the Fed, <coughs> central banks, reducing their balance sheet. So I think it's very different, right? I, I think that it's very different. I think that it is really relevant to think about the altcoin market in terms of their Bitcoin pairs, because otherwise what ends up happening is you end up holding on to something like an, a relic. And before you know it, before you know it, you blink and the altcoin that you've been holding that you thought was going to outperform Bitcoin one day you wake up and you realize that altcoin is down 97% against Bitcoin. 
these are relics, guys. You know, they are. I, I don't. You can call it what you want, right? But Litecoin has been in a downturn against Bitcoin since 2013. <coughs> and I know there's people that just keep saying, you know, just any day now, 97% down. A lot of these altcoins become relics. Dash Bitcoin. What is it down now? 99.5% down. The way to navigate the cryptoverse where you can sort of grow from one cycle to another is to value your portfolio in terms of its Satoshi valuation, not its USD valuation. <coughs> For some reason, unbeknownst to me, I decided to make it my mission to get people to value their portfolio and their Satoshi valuation. I wish, honestly, that I had not done that. Not because I don't think it was the right thing to do, but because I think there's most people don't actually care, right? Most people don't actually care. But because I've, I'm in it this, I mean, because I'm in it this deep so far, I'm not going to stop now, especially as it seems like we're literally knocking on the door of the, of the final breakout of Bitcoin dominance before we might get to rate cuts by the Fed and things can turn around for dominance. I'm not backing down now. I'm going to see it through. But this is what happens to most altcoins over a long enough period of time. And you can ignore it. You can pretend like it doesn't happen. You can say that for your altcoin, it will do well because it has a great community. But this is what is coming for, I would say, 99 point something percent of the altcoin market. <laughs> there are a few that break that rule. There are a few altcoins that have put in higher highs against Bitcoin from one cycle to another. So it's not the entire cryptoverse. I know I might sound like a maxi, but I'm not one. I just think that 99.9 .9 maybe percent of altcoins bleed against Bitcoin. 0.1% is still a lot when you're talking about 30,000 cryptocurrencies, right? That is still some cryptocurrencies that are doing well against Bitcoin over a longer period of time. One thing to consider if I still haven't won you over, if all Bitcoin pairs are so strong, then why do they just put in higher high or sorry lower highs and lower lows from one cycle to another this is collectively total this is total 3 minus usdt divided by bitcoin <coughs> if they're so strong why do they put in lower highs and lower lows if individual altcoins are bleeders against bitcoin then the collective altcoin market is a bleeder against bitcoin right now, a lot of people look at the micro caps and say, well, you know, this micro cap's up 20x or 30x. It's always easy to move those, right? I mean, they don't take as much liquidity. I'm not talking about those. I'm really not. And I know that might sound like a cop-out answer, but that's not my focus. I'm not here to focus on, on what your meme coin is doing this week. I don't care, right? To me, that's not the same thing as Bitcoin. Like, it's not in the same league as Bitcoin. It's, it's a casino, you know? The, the unfortunate reality of crypto is that it, it attracts people who really like to gamble and they, they gamble their money on these casino meme coins. They're different than Bitcoin. You know, I'm not, how can I make sense of what's going on in the meme coin market? I can't, right? I don't, I don't try to. I, I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the market as a whole. This is the general trend. And the general trend is that alts bleed against Bitcoin. <clears throat> so, for some reason, I made it my mission this cycle to get people to value the Satoshi valuation, to value their portfolio in terms of their Satoshi valuation. I hope that it has helped a few of you out there. I do know that my often cautious stance on Bitcoin USD can leave people frustrated, but I will remind you that all I ever do is stick to the risk levels. I don't buy or sell based on what I think short-term price action is going to do. I buy 
when we're at low risk and I sell when we're at high risk because anything other than that is based on my emotions or short-term price action, which I would be a hopeless case in trying to predict. I stick to the risk levels. That's what I do. That's how I navigate Bitcoin. Not what is the Fed doing this week? Not what is inflation coming in at? It's just the risk metric. That's all I care about. That's what my entire strategy boils down to. But I see Bitcoin USD through the lens of Bitcoin dominance as well to try to give me some insight into what is theoretically possible based on the liquidity in the altcoin market. The alt season that everyone wants so badly <coughs> will return one day. And when it does, it'll be over before you know it. Because it always is. The collapse of Bitcoin dominance is really quick, right? It doesn't last long. After it collapses, you then spend a long time waiting for it to slowly grind higher so that you can get another alt season. The alt season that all the influencers are telling you about over the last year, show me on the Bitcoin dominance chart where the alt season is. Where was it? Was it here? Here? No. This is alt season. That is alt season. That is alt season. This is not alt season. This is not alt season. Neither is that or that or that. That is the altcoin market bleeding back to Bitcoin and people being in denial every step of the way. The alt season that you seek will likely come at some point, but it's likely not coming until much higher Bitcoin dominance levels. <coughs> One thing I was looking at, and I'll try to wrap it up. Do you see this pattern? Again, I've done this enough times to know that these analogs never play out. So the point, I don't even know why I even show this because like, it's not going to play out. I've, I've done it like a thousand times with like different analogs. They never play out the same way, but just for, just for laughs, you see this little sort of dead cat bounce by all Bitcoin pairs, take that and go all the way out over here and then put it here. And what, what, what happens when you do that? Connect the dots to some degree, All right? Maybe I need to, oh, I need to go to a regular scale. That's why it looks weird. Connect these dots. When's the peak for all, but when, when is alt season? When is this, this is alt season here, right? This is alt season is when alt Bitcoin pairs durably go up. When would the next one be? Look at this. <laughs> when would it top? Early 2026, basically when it always does, right? So I think it's much more likely that all Bitcoin pairs go to the range lows, hang out there for a while, and then sometime later on, maybe they rally back up. But this is the alt season that you want. <coughs> This is alt slowly bleeding back to Bitcoin, but people being okay with it because their alt their their USD valuations are up. So, anyways, that'll wrap it up. That's my dubious speculation for the day. Um, hopefully, this video is useful to you guys. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. We have got thousands of charts, not only on crypto, but on macro, on stocks. If you wish I talked more about altcoins, but you're just like, why does he have to, you know, his, 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 his maxi side is showing, right? If you really want more altcoin analysis, you can get it through the website, right? IntoTheCryptoverse.com. We have an asset filter where you can literally look at basically, I, I don't know how many exactly we have, but we've got a lot, right? And you can click on whatever you want 
And what happens when you do that is it then filters out all these charts based on that cryptocurrency. So if you want to look at Ethereum, you just click on the asset filter Ethereum, and then you load in the chart, and then it shows you that chart for Ethereum. You can do the same thing for all these different cryptocurrencies, right? So if you want more altcoin analysis, do it yourself on here, right? I mean, there's so I don't have the time to go through and <coughs> talk about 200 different altcoins that are probably going to be, you know, irrelevant in five years. But if, if there's an altcoin that you're holding and you're trying to figure out, like, you know, can you get some analysis on it? Where do you get it? What do you do besides looking at TradingView? We have a lot of tools on here that you can look at and, and it'll, it'll filter it by that cryptocurrency, right? And then you can go look at it, right? You can see how many, day, how many days has it been since Ethereum dropped 30%? Oh, 501 days. What was the previous record? Oh, 236. Huh. <coughs> it's quite a long time. And then even from here, you may say, well, Ben, that, that's great for crypto, but what about other asset classes? You can do the same thing with other asset classes too, right? You can go look at Apple. When's the last time Apple had a 30% decline? It's been 450 days. Ah. Seems normal, right? When's the last time Meta had a 30% drop? 508 days. When's the last time it had a 50% drop? 512 days, right? You can see the record over here was 3,500 days, right? So we have a lot of tools on the website. I just, I don't have time to talk about them in all these different videos, but just know that it's there. There's tons of stuff there. Um, well, there's different tiers on the website. By the way, we have a free tier too. I mean, free tier, you get a newsletter and you do get access to a few charts. And we're, we're kind of always adding some new charts to the free tier every few months or so. Um, I think some of the, I think some of the different things that are on the free tier are um, like the DCA simulation tool. Um, so we have, we have a lot of different tools, right? But I mean, you know, we do have sort of DCA strategies where you can sort of say, well, what if you DCA this amount of money into Bitcoin weekly, day of the week, starting when, going to win, you know, what have you invested? How much have you accumulated? What is it worth? How much are you up? You know, it breaks it down by sort of a table, um, based on your portfolio value at the time. Right. So I think you get this for free. And then I think there's a couple other things you can get on the free tier as well. So again, you could at least check out the free tier. Um, and hopefully that does provide some value to you. Anyway, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Link to the description below. We will have the sale going on through um, April. And then we're actually going to raise prices, right? So I know inflation sucks, but um, we will raise prices then. Um, and uh, we just, we've added so much to the website over the last two years that... Um, you know, I think it's time because there's just, there's so many there's just so many charts uh, and so many tools. I think that it, it is time to do that. So again, uh, we, we will do that at the having, right? So when Bitcoin halves, we'll raise prices. Um, if you want to get access to these tools, you can do so through into the cryptoverse.com. And we also have a sale right now going on, right? So in addition to the the lower price that it will be later, it's also a sale right now. So guys, make sure you check that out. Links in the description below. Subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.